traveling at supersonic speed is headed over the North Atlantic toward the east coast of the United States. So retro, and uh, yeah, tonight we're gonna be doing something a little different. I'm gonna be putting together this. Oh, hold on. Ah. It's colorful in here. We're gonna be putting together this vintage UFO toy model. All right, so here's the box. Um, it's not. <laughs> Unopened. It's it was opened and even missing a couple pieces. Didn't have any decals. Didn't have any of the figurines and stuff with it. But you know, eh, it's still so cool. I just didn't care. But uh, yeah, all the main parts were there. I, it was mostly just missing. <coughs> I think the uh, the ship's pilots and uh, crew. There we go, just laying out all the main pieces. I really, I have not made any models. I mean, my gosh, since I was a kid. I used to put together uh, Star Wars models. My favorites were uh, Imperial ships. I always liked the good old Imperial ships. Ah, but this is fun. I really enjoyed it. I probably, I, I had them uh, check and see if they can get me a Corvair. So I'll be, be super into trying to find a Corvair and, and build one of those as well. Especially when you know the inside and out of a vehicle, it's kind of fun because you know where everything goes already. Uh, this is a level two um, model, they said, a skill level two. So it's, you know, not, not too challenging, but a good thing to get back into, I guess. I guess these are supposed to be like the globes for, I don't know if that's propulsion. I guess it's part of the propulsion, or I doubt that it's just for viewing. all these little parts and no real explanation of where things are supposed to go so a lot of it I was just guessing but yeah just one by one pull all the parts out and yeah like I said I didn't actually put them necessarily where they're supposed to go I just put them you know wherever I thought it would look cool uh, there's instructions, but they're also kind of, kind of vague. You know, these are really small parts, too. Some of them I didn't end up using, but... Most of them I did. I think I only ended up with, like, a few pieces I didn't use by the end. I had to, uh... I attempted to film and talk at the same time, but that just was not working, so... I had to put the toy together and then I'll, I'm doing the voiceover afterwards so I can talk without being all flabbergasted trying to, trying to assemble a, uh, a spaceship at the same time. Now let's see if I can just get, okay, so. There's my new brushes. Open up the paint. Now this is enamel paint, 
so <laughs> you gotta be real sure you know what you're doing with these. interaction on the page has been entertaining. I got this blue, this Venusian blue. That's what I've been calling it. And yeah, just gonna start with doing some of the little details here. It's like a computer screen. <laughs> it's a tube screen too, which is fun. It's like a, a rounded glass computer screen in this UFO. Yeah, just, it's, it's tough keeping such a steady hand. You really have to get used to this again, man. It took me a, a minute to get used to it again. But there you go, know, just little details like that. It's little details that really make it seem more authentic when you're done. I used to have to go in and, and detail all the little empire uh, buttons and lights and whistles and stuff they had. I'm trying to get to the... I know I had a couple questions here. Uh, <laughs> someone asked um, how Cat and I met. Um, and it's actually funny, we've known each other for years. Um, we only started, I guess, talking romantically, uh, I guess three years ago. Um, <laughs> but I'd, I'd actually known her for a long time. We were friends first, which I would always suggest is a good, a good thing to do, try to be friends first. But so we already knew each other fairly well when we started our romantic relationship, which was, yeah, it's uh, advisable. Doing these tiny little dots on these doors and stuff like that, and computer screens, it's so tricky. I had to clean up, I think, a little bit that ran. The paint was also pretty thin, so you had to be really careful about about how you applied it. And you see just like the slightest little dot. Oh no, that's what it was. I decided to go red and blue. That's what it was. All these tiny little details. I probably could have gone through and done a little bit more, but I just sort of wanted to add like little Little notes like that. They were suggesting painting like the doors and stuff like that, but eh, I think that was that would that'd be overkill. I also don't know about this angle. Is this angle all right? I wanted to do it front facing, but then I didn't know how to actually work with the camera right in front of me while I tried to to operate. It was really entertaining though. It's, I, I have, it's maybe a little OCD in me. It's fun to do these tiny little details and meticulous things. I enjoy it a lot. I don't recall ever doing cars, but I must have, I must have put together car models when I was a kid. Because I had a lot of models at some point. I would, I would mess with them a lot. I also just broke out my gimbal again. I don't know why I stopped using it. It's nice because it has like the face follow feature, which is very useful, although it's not being applied here. But it is what's holding the camera up, which is nice. It's a nice steady camera angle. So hopefully you'll start getting a clear picture a little bit more. So now with this Lamel, you need to use, uh, of course, like paint brush cleaner which is crazy, you can't just use water, it's oil-based paint. So once it dries, 
<laughs> it's on there. But yeah, uh, <laughs> me and Kat have been friends on Facebook for a long time, and then one day she just messaged me. And uh, she came down and visited, and the rest is history. details now. Is this is keyboard being super loud when I do this. I'm trying to find the other questions. Oh, here we go. job at Legacy? Um, that is another fun question. Um, I, and, and it's funny, there's a video um, of me going for an interview and all that stuff and sort of running it through, but we, um, <laughs> we ended up, uh, we were shopping. I was down there looking for an anniversary present for Kat. Um, and the previous manager had just retired. So I came down there and I wanted to see, um, you know, if they were getting along okay. Uh, I know they needed someone and they were looking for somebody. So um, <laughs> I went and checked on them and on my way home, I believe, uh, she texted me. The owner texted me and asked if I'd come in for an interview. So um, yeah, it's funny is I, <laughs> I thought my channel had really made a difference um, in how this worked, but it really didn't seem to, because I just found out the other day, she's never actually watched any of my videos, which I think is funny. Um, <laughs> I guess it's just that I shopped there so often that they ended up assuming I'd, I'd know what I was talking about. So that was fun. These tiny, I don't know if you can see even how tiny some of these red details are. I'm literally just like tapping the very tip of these points, trying to bring out little, little accents. Look at that, look how precise. I was pretty impressed with those, man. That was a good one. <laughs> it's been a long time. My hand isn't the steadiest. There were only a couple times I had to adjust and uh, wipe it off and start over. So it was pretty good. Let's see, what else? Uh, how long have I lived in Myrtle Beach? I actually, this is my 10th year of living in Myrtle Beach, which is, you know, it's kind of wild. Um, <laughs> it feels like uh, I've been here forever. But I also, when I was a kid, we used to come here on vacation all the time. Um, every year for at least a week, sometimes two, if not, you know, longer. Um, they had a condo up on the north end of Myrtle Beach, uh, closer to like uh, Atlantic Beach and stuff like that, out that way. A uh, little timeshare that they bought. So I've been coming here since the 80s. So I got to see everything change and all the new places. Like I remember when uh, Broadway at the beach opened. Like I, I was there like that year when it opened and saw like the you know the dinosaur, the dragon coming out of the, the castle and breathing fire. It used to do like all kinds of stuff. Now the dragon's not even there. They tore it down and I think it's just a parking lot now that or a little lot like an empty lot now, which is nuts. But yeah, I've lived here uh, about ten years. I guess 2012 was when I moved here. So that was entertaining. So now here I'm just painting the uh, this bottom disc. They suggested orange, but I went with the blue, that Venusian blue. <laughs> it's fun. 
you know, to go back to it, it's fun. And one of the great things about me and Kat having been friends first is we actually have a lot of mutual friends. So most of our friends are all friends with each other. So it's kind of neat because everybody was really excited uh, both to see us start dating and, like, you know, we're getting married and all that. Everyone's pretty excited about that. It's quite a Facebook, uh, Facebook affair. <laughs> so there we go. We got the, the propulsion area painted blue. That happy Venusian blue. Now I do have another model, um, from the land, what is it called? Land of the Giants, which is like a 60s TV show that I guess I never saw. I've never even heard of it. Um, but the ship looks cool, and since I don't know anything about it and don't really care, um, it'll be fun because I can just detail it however I like and not have to worry about staying true to the show or anything like that because I've never seen it and I know nothing of it. Alright, and now there's supposed to be these red lights running around the top. So I'm just adding these red accents. Now, instead of it being red all the way around, like it is in the box, I alternated red and blue. Uh, again, and, you know, it's funny. I used to be like a little junior ufologist. I used to be super into ufology and all that stuff. Uh, back in the early X-Files days and everything. I still actually, me and Kat are re-watching the X-Files now. And, uh, yeah, they often say that there's many lights, many colored lights. It wasn't just like a red light or a blue light. They usually would say there was lots of different lights that they would see uh, on the UFO. So I wanted to make it as authentic as possible and incorporate at least two different color lights. I don't know what I'm doing here. I guess I'm just <laughs> doing something off camera. I was wiping excess paint off that paint, I guess. Must have had an error. Oh yeah, around the red. I sometimes forget I'm doing this on camera, so I just like don't pay attention to where I am. But so I skip and do every other one red and then every other one is blue. Which is, like I said, a little more authentic to what, uh, what people have reported seeing. Now I myself, I don't actually really believe in UFOs. I mean, I guess I do, but I don't think that there's aliens in them. Like, I don't think people from Venus came down here in flying saucers. Um... And there's a lot of scientific reasons to argue that stuff. Uh, the main being impracticality, and not just like, oh, it uses a lot of fuel to get all the way here. It's just that like we already have planes that don't show up on radar. So I would assume that if they were intergalactic travelers, we probably wouldn't have picked them up on radar so often. Uh, they probably wouldn't have been visible to the naked eye. Uh, all kinds of stuff like that. It, it seems far more uh, terrestrial in origin. So, I always kind of assumed, uh, like Cancer Man said on X-Files, that it was just Cold War nonsense, that they were just trying to convince people they were UFOs so that they could win the Cold War. Which I find interesting now that UFOs are so much in the media and, and being discussed again, considering the sort of Cold War scenario that we find ourselves in with uh, China and Russia in the 21st century these days. But yeah, I find it interesting, the renewed interest in UFOs all of a sudden and, and flying saucers and whatnot. I doubt that it's a, it's a coincidence. I'm sure it's intentional for one reason or another. All right, then we're going to go back and do the blue lights. And as you see, I already screwed that one up. <laughs> the blue was a little runnier than the red. I should have mixed it better before. The paint was really good, though. It was an excellent suggestion from uh, 
the young man at Ed's Hobby Shop. Ed's Hobby Shop, by the way, is where I got all of my glue and paint and brushes and paint cleaner. Uh, locally owned. Right downtown. I'm assuming that's Broadway Street. Right where Broadway and 501 meet. That's 501, right? Or no, that's 3rd Ave. I'm sorry. It's right downtown by, by, by the Broadway District. And they've just recently renovated. Um, I'm assuming it's because a car drove through the front window. But it actually looks really nice. It's opened up a lot. Okay, let's see. I'm getting off topic here. But see the blue and the red lights? That's a lot more authentic to what uh, what people have reported seeing on flying saucers. It's interesting, too. Uh, the History Channel had a special uh, Project Blue book that was pretty fun to watch. Just because I had actually read the book. It's based on a real book from the 60s. or I believe it was the 60s, maybe 50s. Um, by this guy who was a UFO investigator for the government. Uh, it was his job to come up with the excuses why it wasn't a UFO. Um, and it's interesting, because sometimes it wasn't. Uh, he openly was like, yeah, it, it turned out to be you know this or that. But um, he was kind of doing like a Mulder, where he was working for the government, but trying to figure out what was actually going on on his own. It's, it, it was an interesting book. But the series is really good. Cat tells me that some of the actors are from Game of Thrones, I think, but I, I, I've never watched Game of Thrones. I'm not much for fantasy myself. Sci-fi is all right. I like goofy sci-fi, like real cheesy, bad sci-fi. All right, that was just painting the little front portal window. I'm gonna do the lights on the inside there. There's like a little light panel on the roof. So I'm gonna paint that blue. Let's see. Have you met any Myrtle Beach YouTubers? Whew, boy, have I. <laughs> no, um, yeah, there's Big Time Myrtle Beach, uh, who I've met a couple times. Um, actually, the it was like the first day or first couple days I was working at the shop. They came in and I recognized them. Um, and I also saw them again. I, they're on my video where we go to uh, to uh, um, the hangout. He was at the opening day there too. So we've met them a couple times. I talked to Brian of Beaching with the Boons pretty regularly on Facebook, but I'm trying to think. I don't think we've ever met face to face. Um, no, we haven't. Or Tierney. I, I've seen them. Like, we've driven past them and, like, yelled at them quite a few times. <laughs> but I've never actually stopped and talked. Um, I keep trying to... I want to organize some kind of thing where we have, like, a... And maybe even at the Tiki Bar, have a day where everyone comes out and you can come meet uh, Beachin' with the Boons and me and uh, Big Time Myrtle Beach and all that. I think that would be fun. And as far as vibes, you know, it's funny. I've I've seen Myrtle Beach vibes, I'm pretty sure, out. There's this one guy who, whenever I run into him, he kind of looks at me like he's like, uh-oh, and then turns away and will walk in the other direction. And I have a sneaking suspicion that that's vibes. Um, just sometimes when I'm filming or, or he'll be in the same area, I think that's him. But I've, I've never actually seen his face. Um, I think I think some of his early videos he had his face in it. But I, I wouldn't recognize him today if I saw him. He's been big on the... Uh, I'm looking, I'm doing all the little dials. Those are gauges. Which again, same kind of thing. It's so funny. They're like gauges like you'd have on your car with like a needle that goes up and down. It's the kind of technology they thought a UFO would have. How ridiculous is that? Like, even cars don't have that anymore. <laughs> it's a digital display half the time. Oh, super fun. I really enjoy this. I'm gonna have to uh, maybe do this more often. I gotta find a better setup for doing this so that you can maybe watch me. Maybe I need two cameras to film at the same time or something so you can see me as I do it. 
but trying to concentrate on painting and all this, I would just spend the whole time stumbling and going, uh, uh, um, because I'm, I'm way too focused on how to do this. So then there's all the, that's the landing gear. You gotta pull that out of the bottom. It's folded up in there. And then I gotta attach the top and bottom now. They go together like so. So I just had to grab some of the plastic cement. And this is my first time using the glue as well. It was a little, <laughs> a little runnier than I was expecting. I was gonna try to just tack it and it, like, it just came pouring out. So I resorted to using a brush instead, which I think is better anyhow, more precise. So I just took the little bit of glue that fell out and ran it around the edge. This is so, like, I don't know, there's something really zen about doing all this. I really do. I want to start, because uh, there's a lot of classic cars, obviously, that I like and that I'm a fan of and that I would love to own. But I don't have $300,000 to spend on classic cars, so. This may be a good solution. I might be able to just make models of them and whatever. Look at this. Such a nice fit. And that glue is really good. I don't know what it's called. Uh, testers. Testers plastic cement. Really good stuff. And again, that's what the, the young gentleman that Ed suggested for me. And there you go, just like that. Top and bottom secured. That portal window looks nice too. So then you have to add, it's every single chair. There's the captain's chair and then three, uh, I guess, crew station. Which they're also standing up. Can you imagine intergalactic travel and you can't sit down? <laughs> so just take a tiny bit of glue, pop it in there. Each of the crew member posts. It's not a very egalitarian ship. You have a captain's quarters, which is like massive with all the controls, and then three dudes just standing around in the other room. It's an interesting layout. No sleeping quarters either. Bit of a cramp situation, I imagine. I'll probably uh, do the other model, maybe this week, I don't know. I really did enjoy doing this. And I don't know, do, kid, do people still do models? Is like making models still a thing? I don't even know, like do young people do this? All the cars that I saw were like generally older cars. It doesn't seem like much of a young person's hobby, but. I really enjoyed it, and it's fun. Maybe I'll do a bunch of weird ones too. And I know you can do like they had the ones where you could build a monster. I used to always love those where you're like the Wolfman, and you could build a, a little scale model of the Wolfman or the creature from the Black Lagoon or something. All right, and then this is where I don't know the pieces sort of were just put them wherever because I couldn't figure out much. <laughs> from the instructions. So there's an instrument panel right here. It's a rubber cement, man, it's really good. Like pretty much almost as soon as you get it flush with something, it just holds. So we got one instrument panel. Look 
at these tiny little parts. <laughs> Another instrument panel. That looks like radar and stuff like that. Again, as if a UFO would be working on such. You'd need like a big computer with a tube screen and stuff. <laughs> it's so funny. This is me trying to figure out where exactly to put this part. So that's obviously to put in the captain's quarters, the instrument panel, and all that stuff. And it's already starting to come together, man. Like, I don't know. It doesn't look like much when you start, but it came together, you know, really quick. Also, I know uh, George Clinton, the Parliament Funkadelic, will be touring through soon, so. Sort of an homage to his mothership. If you're unfamiliar with his work, I would I'd check it out. I've seen him several times live. Excellent stage show. Revolutionized music quite a few times, actually. I'm still fumbling, trying to figure out where I'm going to put this instrument panel. So it goes over there. And right in place. trying to figure out how to separate. There's two room dividers. There's supposed to be a hallway that runs through the middle, but uh, I don't know. It, it would have been crooked the way I put the instrument panels in. So, you see me fumbling trying to figure out how to get it so that it's not crooked, but <laughs> it was not a successful attempt. And crooked all the way. So, I do away with one of them and I just leave the uh, the captain's room basically is the only wall. And just apply a little glue. Oh, I'm adding this these panels, which I also painted. Look at that tiny little meticulous paint. So fun. I especially like miniatures. Tiny things are always, for some reason, my favorite. And just adding glue to the other panel. Look at that. I'm not sure what this thing's supposed to be, but it looks pretty cool. keep finding parts and I'm just like, I don't know, where should I glue this? <laughs> just gluing on different parts, who knows, whatever. Instrument panel. The inside of this thing is really detailed. I can never tell if videos like this will be entertaining or not. I really like meticulous <laughs> videos like this. Um, I will watch those coin pusher videos for like hours. Anything like this where there's, you know, it's just like slow TV almost. I really enjoy it. I don't know if it's your guys' thing or not, but it sure is fun. Sometimes media is just a little too intense and fast-paced these days. 
it's nice to just like relax and be able to watch something that is slow and takes time. So you see I've added the little globes onto the bottom. Uh, now I'm uh, securing the landing here in the down right position. And again, that glue is a champ, man. It really works well. Yeah, your little propulsion globes, landing gear. Look at this thing. Now, I mean, you know, it's not the prettiest model ever. My paint isn't perfect, but the details and stuff, it looks so cool. I had a little problem with the paint running on that uh, pedestal. But aside from that, man, all the little buttons and gauges and stuff, it looks pretty good. But yeah, look how detailed. And you get your landing gear, those little globes. I think those globes are super cool too. Nowadays, they'd have it souped up so they'd light up or something. But there you go. You're the UFO kid. Man. Yeah, it's gnarly. I got this thing sitting on my shelf now. That was a lot of fun. And I'm definitely going to get into models again. Just another check out of the details of the inside. The instrument panels and doors. Gauges. Look at that. How cool is that thing? So, uh, yeah, let me know if you uh, enjoyed our little model making session here. Maybe I'll do it live next time. And we'll, we'll figure something out. But, uh, yeah, until next time, Retro Myrtle Beach Guy, signing off. Uh -huh.